So in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, discounted cash flows in supply chain. And then in, in some of the upcoming videos, I will show you how to do the calculations using Excel. So first of all, why is it important to look into discounted cash flows in supply chain? Because the decisions we will make today, it will generate revenue or savings or cost over the upcoming years. So we should always consider the expected outcomes of the future, future, future years or future time period. It could be years, it could be months. And then we convert that value to the present value, which we will call net present value. So discounted cash flows normally analyzes the present value of a stream of future cash flows and allows managers to compare different cash flow streams in terms of other financial, in, in terms of their financial value. And the basic idea behind this is that the, the time value of money, a dollar today is worth much more than a dollar tomorrow. So if I make one dollar today, what can I buy with that dollar? Most likely I will not be able to buy the same thing with one dollar next year. Okay, maybe it will be $1.2, something like that. So the value of money always depreciates. So now we have to look into a few equations to calculate this one. So normally what we use is we use something like one, one by one plus K as a discount factor, okay? So here you can see that we, we can have many cash flows, as many as we want. So this will be our initial cash flow and then we will have as many cash flow as we want but all of them will be multiplied with a factor of one by one plus K to the power T. T is the time period. So it starts from one. So the next year, if the cash flow of next year will have a power of one, the cash flow of the year after will have a power of two, the cash flow of the year after that will have a power of three. So it increases continuously. Okay. So that's the idea of calculating net present value. And here the K is the rate of return, which we say rate of return here. So what is the rate of, rate of return? So normally, you know, one idea to think of rate of return is from the perspective of a safe return that you will get if you invest the money. So this can actually vary based on the country you are in. But normally, you know, if you, let's say, if you are in Norway, you, you just keep the money in, in the savings account in your bank, you will have a interest rate of like 1%, 2%, something like that. But if you keep the money in a country like Africa, you will have a interest rate of about 12%, 10%, something like that. So based on the country and based on the risk associated with the investment, the value, the rate of return can, in, can vary. But anyway, we are not going to discuss about that much, but uh, most of the time, to be on the safe side, you can assume a 10% rate of return. Okay, so you assume that, okay, whatever investment you make, you will receive 10% more. So if you invest $1 today, you will receive $1.1 .1 tomorrow. Okay, $1.10. So that's one idea of looking at it. And this is very useful when, calculating the present value of, um, of future cash flows, okay? And in this case, uh, we will look into this from the supply chain context, and our goal is to compare net present value of different supply chain design options. Okay, so we can, we will look into designing supply chains in different ways and calculate NPV for all the different options and see which one gives us the highest return, highest profit or highest co cost savings. So just to shed a bit more light into this thing, you know, so let's say I have $1 today and tomorrow I also make $1 and the day after I also, the year after I also make $1. So I, on the first year I make $1, on the second year I make $1 and the third year I make $1. So in total I see that I am making $3 over three years. But is it so? Actually, if I calculate the present value of the money I will be making for the next three years, it is not really $3, it is less than that. So if I follow the same equation here, you know, I will have like $1 plus my future cash flow will be multiplied by the one by one divided by one plus K. So if my K is 10%, 
okay if my k is 10 percent that would mean it's 0 0.10 that would mean 1 plus k would mean so 1 plus k would mean 1.1 1 .1. so actually my discount factor is now 1 divided by 1.1 1 .1, okay so that is about 0. Point, uh, I think it's about 0 0.90 something like that 1 divided by 1.1 1 .1, it's about 0 0.91 okay 0.91 so this will be multiplied with 0 0.91 okay so that actually I will get a value of 0 0.91 because it, it multiplies with 1 plus for the third one for the third one it will be so here again the same 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 uh, same logic here so we will have 10% and 0 0.10 but here because it is the time period 2 we will have a square over this for to count for this time period okay so when we square 1.1 we get 1.21 so then in the next case we will have a value of 1.21 okay so when we divide 1 by 1.21, so yeah, I'm writing it here. So we will be now divide 1 by 1.21. So the value of this is about 0 0.83. So actually we see that we are earning $1 after three years, but actually if I calculate the present value of that, I am I'm actually earning 0 0.83. I'm earning less than $1, okay? So then if I just add all this up, my total net cash flow, the present value of my net cash flow is 2.74, okay? So here, this is the idea that, you know, if I look into it in simple eye, in clean eye, I see that I'm making actually $3. But when I calculate the rate of return and I discount it and calculate the net present value, then actually I see that I am actually making 2.74, not $3. It's a simple explanation and um, here I'm using very small numbers, but just think about it. When you have like millions of dollars invested, this cash flow change, this, this discounting of cash flow actually can make a big difference. <music>